right, we're doing some dot-to-dot -dot drawing exercises, working on our line quality. If you're wondering what he's doing, he's putting dots on the page, dot-to-dot, -dot, and he's doing this ghosting technique. The line isn't being drawn to the dot, to dot, one dot from the other. It's being ghosted. Not something you want to do to your friends, but it's okay to do it to the paper. And then when you're confident of that line, after 10, and he's doing it again. After 10 of those ghosts, he puts down the line. Good job, buddy. All right, you're doing it again. Dot to dot, puts down the line. So it's just training muscle memory, right, by doing the 10. Uh, I recommend doing that a lot of times. And then once you got a flow, you can just start doing line after line after line after line after line. All right, do that. Yeah, sure. If you turn the paper, <laughs> copy paper on its side, so it's portrait, and then this line is about three quarters of that length. Um, right, create, starting an ending point and then, then create the line. After you do it for a while, then you can just go making the line without doing dot to dot. But start out doing the dot to dot. It gives your eye to f something to focus on. Okay, so once you've got those line exercises done, we're now doing right through a center point. So all lines are converging at this center point and you're trying to draw a straight line through each one. So that means ghosting, even thinking dot to dot, that helps you line it up and practice the ghosting method and drawing through. I'd like you to do two of those, two pages of those. You can fill your page doing different size lines or you can do one like I did that's rather big. But again, the bigger the line, the more swing you're going to have to have it in your arm. It's just a drill. It's like, you know, like anything, training, scales, music, the jump shot if you're shooting baskets, right? Free throws. Kicking a ball if you're playing soccer. Serving if you're tennis. I mean, there's all sorts of things, skills you can work on in a, in a single sport. In art's the same. There's just skill sets. Right, and so my class, whether you're painting or drawing, when I start my classes, we just work on exercises. He forgot what he's doing, I think. Oh no, he's making some dots. This is a straight line into a curve exercise. I'm putting the dots down first, um, and then connecting them with a straight line. And that's gonna give me kind of a scaffolding to create a curved form. And I'm just making up that curved form. Okay, that's not one that you have to create. Um, what I'm doing is, again, constructing the curved line out of straight lines by first putting in points. And points are just helping me reference where I want to go with my line. Now, this is, again, an exercise to train. It's not how you always have to make a curve. Um, but it's getting us to see um, techniques, techniques, right, that help us make decisions about where to put things, how things curve, how to break them down. It's always about breaking them down to their smallest little equations, right? Um, just drew a circle. Why did he draw a circle, guys? Um, I drew a circle because in my head, there is a way to think about the proportions of a circle, right? Before I draw one, I think about the proportions of it. So its height to width ratios are the same. And by drawing the circle, next I can kind of show you the anatomy of an ellipse. And ellipse is, an ellipse is, 
um, like a circle that's rotated in space. So if you take a jar, um, a lid, a circular lid to something and you tilt it um, away from you or towards you, rather than looking at straight on as a circle, when you tilt it, it becomes an ellipse. And the anatomy of that ellipse is uh, on their minor axis, axis, when you cut it in half there, it's two equal sides. So um, what this is trying to explain is just that, the anatomy of an ellipse, finding the minor axis, right? Creating that midpoint, and then each half of an ellipse is exactly the same on the other side. You're creating an area that is tapering. So there's it's like a, almost like a V shape, but it's open at the beginning and the end. And then what I'm going to have you do is practice making ellipses in that shape that they get bigger and bigger. And they touch the top of that V shape and the bottom of that V shape. And then they also touch the side of the previous ellipse. Okay. So you're going to fill up a sheet of the, that would I've got my ruler out now. So I wanted to eyeball trying to make a box. And now I got my ruler in there and I'm correcting. All right. Another exercise for you to work on is creating a box through vision first, All right? Just trying to eyeball it and do your best to create equal proportions. Then I come in with my ruler and I correct that box. It might take you a, a lot of times before that starts to make sense. Again, just fill up your page. You do a, a page or two of that exercise. Once you get that box, um, what I'm doing now is I am building an anatomy of a circle within the box. And this is in a handout that I'm giving you. Mostly I want you to follow the handout on the construction method. My video is not gonna be as helpful as the looking at the source image for this. And it came from a great artist. Her name is Sadie Valeri. She's out of the Bay Area. I think she is done with a studio that she had for training people in like a classical method. I think she's done with that and just doing it online now, like most people. So if you had to scale something up really, really big, right? You're not gonna just wing it with a circle. Like, ah, oh, I just make that circle it's huge, right? No, you have to have a plan. And so this is, you know, this is one way to have a plan. It'll keep you in check. All right, anatomy of a circle. Here's another way of doing it or thinking about it. Um, but first, Mainly what I'm going to do is um, break down a square. So I'm making sure it's square by using a ruler. I'm a little slow at it. I think I even sped this up. It'd be painful to watch if I didn't. You heard measure twice, cut once. It's like carpentry. It really helps. Okay, so I made the square, then I cut it through diagonally, through the center. Um, that creates center, is why corner to corner. Um, it finds the center of any rectilinear form. And once you find center, um, you can keep um, using that same formula of doing the corner to corner to find center again and again and again. You can keep breaking down a rectilinear form. In this case, it's a square. And then you can find the vertical and horizontal just by going through that point where the cross is, meet, is met. And this is going to be super useful for you as we move forward into other exercise. So by doing this now and doing this exercise now, um, it'll help you with further exercise and um, in perspective. Okay. Um, okay. What I wanted you to see was um, how the circle was created. It's each four quadrants. Um, 
match one another. So if one section of a circle, one fourth of the circle is created in perfection, you just repeat it over and over and over and over and it creates a perfect circle. So as long as one quadrant is repeated four times with the right arc, um, you can make a circle out of that. And then once you kind of get that understanding, you can just try to freeform some circles. Okay, so now we're gonna practice making circles um, within a certain boundary. And again, we're using that kind of cone um, dividing over paper in the cone shapes. Um, this would be great if you did this for the ellipses instead of um, the little baby one I made. Um, divide up your whole page like this. Now we're doing it with circles. Okay, so again, I touch the top line, the bottom line, and uh, the line previous, or not the line, but the circle previous made. You're trying to get them just to touch. You don't want them to cut through one another or over or under the line, you wanna to try to make them all fit within that. Again, this is helping you practice proportions uh, and circles. That's it. It's, in some ways, it's like learning numbers. As a kid, we learn addition, subtraction, uh, short division, and long division, multiplication, right? You get into these algebraic formulas, trigonometry, calculus. It just, you know, they keep building and at some point, like, that becomes creative, right? Once you master those simple forms, you get creative with math. I'm not, but I know people are. <laughs>